You know what I mean? Um, that's why I'm glad to see that the support for the troops in our present conflicts right now, they're not blaming the troops for it. Yeah. See, we got blamed for it. Yeah. Okay, we got blamed for it. We, uh, <clears throat> you should have run away. You should have, you know, not gone in. You yeah. should have, you know. Yeah. And, you know, what was your choice? You, nobody knew that they were going to partner draft Dodgers. So your choice was leave the country and never come home or go into military service right. or try and hide somewhere in country. Right. And try and hide somewhere in country or leave the country and never come home was not an option. Mm. And so as a result, you go in. Yeah. I mean, if, if I had known that they were going to pardon the draft dodges, you know, five years afterwards or something, it might have made a difference. But the, you know, the, the prospect of never being, being able to return home was just not an option. Yeah. Um, so now here we are in 2010, and how does the war affect you today? There's a camaraderie among Vietnam vets, mainly because of the way we were treated when yeah. we got home. And uh, I find that <coughs> present day soldiers, present day military, have the utmost respect for you. Because all of them have heard what we went through. Yeah. Um, the average person on the street now, uh, even the baby boomers, give you the respect you deserve now. Um, I remember, I mean, this was years later, this was into the 80s too. There were still those people out there that thought that all Vietnam vets were drug crazed killers. Yeah. You know, I mean, I remember working, I was running a store at an Attic Mall, and I remember having one particular older woman, a uh, uh, hippie, maybe, I don't know. She had made the comment, uh, basically, you know, the, the Vietnam veterans, uh, without knowing that I was a Vietnam veteran, that uh, they were all drug crazed killers and, you know, this and everything. And after she finished her rant, I said, Oh, really? She said, Yeah. You really think so? Yeah. I said, I'm a Vietnam vet. She quit the next day. <laughs> so I didn't have to. Yeah. Figure out a way to get rid of her. <laughs> she took care of it for <laughs> she you. She took care of it for her. <laughs> but you know, up until, I mean, really, up until, I don't want to say 9-11, but up until the late, you know, 90s or so, I mean, there were still people out there that, mm. you know, had that, that view. Mm. That, you know, I mean, drugs, yeah, there was drugs in Vietnam. There's no question about it. Sure. They sent the baby boomers, the hippie generation, into an area that was loaded with drugs. Yeah. All right? So they've already been smoking before they got in. Right, right. Or they've been doing drugs before they got in. Now let's go take them to the land of marijuana and heroin. Mm. All right? Where you can buy a pound of marijuana for $15 and you can buy $100 worth of heroin for 10 bucks. Mm. What happens? People go wild. People go wild. Mm. And, uh, but because of it, because of what, because of what Hollywood portrayed, the drug craze, mm. you know, that's what everybody thought, Yeah. you know, and I mean, 95% of these guys, or even the, the smokers, the drinkers, I mean, they were just, you know, everyday people, Yeah. you know, and you could... You could bet your life on them, and you could bet your life on them. Yeah. You know, I mean, and uh, people just, I don't know. I remember having a major discussion with a, an ex-Marine one time who had been over there and talking about us, those hippie army guys who were there pot and everything. And I said, what should you rather have? Some guy who's just a little high and can snap out of it in a second or some drunk in the AO who can't snap out of it all? What do you mean? I says, well, when I was there, there was two type of guys, the smokers and the drinkers. The smokers, if the crap hit the fan, they were right out of it and they were ready to move. The drunks weren't. So which one would you rather have? Mm. Oh, those goddamn hippie bastards. Yeah. I said, never mind, you just got your mind set up. And, mm. But 
Uh, went to Bangkok for an R and R. One night in Bangkok. Ah, uh, makes a hard man humble. <laughs> Amazing town. I, they, I guess it's not what it was when I was there now, but um, if you wanted it, and I mean if you wanted it, mm. it was there. Prostitution was, still is, I guess, legal. I mean, you walked into a bar and there were naked girls dancing, mm. you know, up on the top of the bar, and you go, hmm, that one right there, mm. you know, and you could rent it by the hour or by the week. Yeah. Um, Drugs, liquor, um, and some of these girls, I mean, they uh, would walk around with you, you know, pay for your, you know, not pay, barter for you, you know, things like that. Personal and, guide. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was a wild town. I'll bet. Unbelievably wild town. Well, we've used up pretty close to two hours of conversation, so I would like to thank you for having this opportunity to talk to you in front of the camera so that everyone in Grafton gets to hear the story of your experiences and well I'd like to thank you for having somebody comfortable enough to sit down here and do this with well you. thank you and welcome home thank you so that wraps up this edition in studio of day trip to history if you know a combat veteran or are one yourself and would like to participate in this type of casual conversation please contact me at spooky4747 at yahoo.com and that'll appear on screen or give us a call here at the studio and leave your information with whoever answers the phone and uh, we look forward to having the opportunity to talk to you on camera. So that wraps up this edition of Day Trip to History. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the program and remember we're all living history right now. <laughs>